Okay, so I'm going to go right into it. A couple days ago, I posted a poll question on my YouTube community page. And I asked the question, what race of men is most likely to approach you or who you've had experiences with um, since we've started having these conversations? I gave the choice of white, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, and Asian, and Native American. The results may shock you. They do not shock me. But the results may shock you that 70% of 1,000 people who voted on that poll said it was white men. And that's really interesting. And I have a confession to make you guys. I have to be honest with you. I do have a confession to make. When I wrote the book Swirling, How to Date, Mate, and Relate, Mixing Race, Culture, and Creed, I said, you need to date everybody. Expand your options. It's a numbers game. Okay, ladies, black women, we know what the issues are. We know we outnumber black men by the millions. We know we have a specific group of relationship challenges that cause us to have to make certain decisions about relationships. So expanding your options just makes common sense. But we never really talked about what group of men is the most amenable to interracial relationships. I knew the whole time that it was white men. And the results play that out. Also, when I see the the wedding videos and people who write to me the majority of the time, the black women who follow me, who write back and say, I've had this great experience. I dated and I married a guy. The guy is usually white. That's just the way it is. But we haven't really explored why other minority men may have an issue with dating particularly black women. It's a sticky subject, so I'm going to go right into it. There's a few things. Some of you may already have an idea, but it kind of crystallizes why 70% of white men are more interested in dating interracially than any other group of men. I'm going to give you guys an uncomfortable truth. While 1,000 respondents gave 70% white men a far, far second, was Hispanic men, but and that was at 20%. 20% is not a lot. 70% is a lot. So let's go with the lower communities, the lower percentage of people who responded to that said that those men were interested. They're all part of minority groups. And unfortunately, we live in a country where class and racial hierarchy are very, very clear. So when you have people who come in from various parts of the world, they are trying to jockey for position to be the model minority. And so you have people who are like, I've come to this country or my parents have come to this country and we have certain traditions and mores and things in which I need to follow my parents made all of these sacrifices. I need to follow it. So, for example, when it comes to Asian men, it's a little tricky dating Asian men if you're a black woman, because if you don't know this already, don't date an Asian man whose parents are alive. I know that sounds really bad, but I'm just telling you that's the truth. Don't do it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the traditions of the Asian culture, particularly Chinese, which I, I know firsthand, is that the man, the son, is responsible for taking care of the parents after uh, they are no longer able to work. So the responsibility is on the son and his wife to take care of their elderly parents, which means that the parents have a huge investment over who their son marries. And if you come from a culture where you don't understand that, you don't understand and honor the traditions of that culture, you're just not going to be a fit. And let me tell you, some of these Asian parents, they find out that you're a black girl. I can tell you stories. I remember there was one girl who told me she found a guy that uh, she liked in college and they dated for years, you guys. Absolute, absolutely for years. She was so in love with him. His mother came to visit. They were living together. His mother came to visit. She hid in the closet the whole time. 
After she left, he finally said something to her about who he was seeing, showed her a picture. Mother threatened to unalive herself because that was not a great choice for her son. I've had other reports of people saying that their parents will disinherit them if they go outside of Asian culture because Asian culture at least there's some similarities and so it may understand the whole parent dynamic but another thing I want to talk about when it comes about when it comes to the being the race for the model minority is something called status exchange so back in the day when the middle class started to emerge back in Europe you had really wealthy merchants they were the ones who did import exports. They did the the spices and the, the fabrics and the gold and the people, um, import export of people. And we all know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that, which increased the merchant class, which increased the middle class. So you had people who had titles who were extremely high up. They were friends with the king, but they didn't have any money. But then you had these up and coming merchants that had the money but didn't have any status. So the people who had status and needed money and the people who had money and who didn't have status got together in a status exchange in order to cultivate a more richer and affluent family structure. So when it comes to minorities dating interracially, you have to think in terms of status exchange. So one thing I find a lot, particularly with Asian men, please, Asian men, don't think I'm picking on you, but seriously, we're going to talk about you today, okay? One thing that I notice is that it tends to be that the preferred type of person that an Asian man is willing to, to date and eventually marry is a white woman and it's pretty much that's the way it goes because it can be a status exchange why would a white woman get with somebody who is a minority outside of love and this guy gives me the butterflies and everything and it's all great and wonderful but we're women and if you're in a if you're a hypergamous woman you may be looking at this man and saying he's educated he loves me he can provide for me And he's looking at her like, she's white. That's all she got to be. I'm just saying, that's all she has to be is white. We can argue the point, but that's really it. But that's the status exchange. So when you're talking about building up, being a model minority and trying so very hard to overcome the obstacles that you came from in your previous countries, you want to come here and do better. And so... It's not really considered doing better if you're with another minority who may be at a lower status than you. That's just the reality of the situation. The second thing I want to talk about when it comes to dating other minority men when it comes to black women is colorism. So if you don't know what colorism, the term means, it means that you discriminate or you develop a hierarchy based on the shade of somebody's skin and it what is usually the case is that the the closer you are to white skin or light skin the more attractive that you are pretty much i would say three-fourths of the globe is made up of people who are darker skinned asian hispanic african all of those countries are plagued in some way or another with colorism. The lighter you are, the more attractive you are. It comes from slavery, it comes from colonialism, because if you were working out in the fields and you were you know, struggling, picking, planting, hoeing and mowing, you had darker skin. But if you were part of the elite class, you weren't out there toiling in the sun. You weren't a worker, you were an executive, or you were a pampered woman. And so your skin tends to be lighter. Colorism is a real thing. It affects not just black people, it affects a wide variety of minority groups in a very negative way. But I'm gonna take this moment to take a break, 
to shout out the sponsor who just happens to be me. We're talking about colorism. We're talking about skin tone. You guys, I launched Watered Body Care. Watered Body Care is the first multi-step system specifically for women of deeper skin tones and mature skin. And it is not a skin lightener and whitener, but what it is going to give you is the best skin you were born with. It is the reason why my skin looks the way it does at 50 years old. I've been developing this product for over three years. It's absolutely amazing and it is spa grade. Dun, dun, dun. This is four weeks of spa grade absolute luxury. You do this once a week in the comfort of your home. It is again 100% spa grade and you get results not just the first time but every time absolutely guaranteed. So check out wateredbodycare.com and just leave those skin bleaching and lighteners alone. Okay, girl, let's keep talking. So we talked already about the quest to be the model minority. And then we talked about colorism. These are two major things that minority groups may struggle with when it comes to dating black women. I mean, we're probably the oldest minority in this country. Um, in terms of, I'm not talking about Native American, I'm talking about when the pilgrims hit the shores, they needed help. And guess who they got? Um, they got slaves from Africa, uh, slaves from Europe, and slaves from uh, like Europe, like uh, in, I don't know, the Slavic countries. The root word of slave is Slav. They also got slaves from places like Ireland and, and other places to help build. But by and far, the oldest minority in this country, if you're going to compare white people, is black people in this country. And so when other minorities come, they may have an impression about black people. They may think, I want to be on the level that's higher than them. So I really don't want to be dating them. Now, I realize what I'm saying is very pessimistic. And it's not to say that none of these men would ever, ever, ever date and marry outside of their community. That's not true. Because I've seen those men, I've been to those weddings, and I know that that's true. It just is a little bit tougher. And if we're going to date efficiently, you've got to be armed with the truth. You got to be armed with the realities of the situation. Otherwise, you're going to blame me for sending you out there to the wolves, okay? So I'm just going to be totally honest with you. So how did we get here, though? It's really crazy, right? So we, you've got issues of minorities who are fighting for supremacy. You've got colorism, which was totally created because of colonial, colonialism and slavery. But you've got the same group of men who, are, who started all of this, the most amenable to dating interracially. So what is that about? It's interesting because another term that I want to introduce to you guys today is the genetic fallacy. So the genetic fallacy basically states that uh, something is true because the origins of it were true. So if we were going to attract or if we were going to attach genetic fallacy to say white men dating black women, some people will say, well, these are the I'm not there's no way I'm going to date the slave master. There's no way I'm going to, you know, do you know this and that with with massa as if the men from 150 200 years ago are still walking among the amongst us like the crypt keepers trying to date black women that is not what's happening right but you see somebody who has a general look of the people who represented your oppression and you want to attach that to their sons and daughters generations removed who have nothing to do with it. And that's the problem. A lot of black women have that block because of that genetic fallacy that we're often being presented with. But the fact of the matter is this, those men are not their fathers. Those men are not their grandfathers or their great grandfathers. These are men we went to school with. I know I did. 
I was raised in almost a whole white neighborhood. These are people who we shared hot dogs and Cokes with. These are people that we watched the fireworks on the 4th of July with. We've got a lot more in common with American white men that we may not necessarily have with people who are different minorities who are amongst us, who may share the same struggles, who may share the same level of melanin with us, but have a totally different cultural experience. The fact of the matter is, is that we've been in America this whole time, and so have they. We've got a lot more in common than you would think. And so when you think about it, it really does make sense that 70% of white men who date interracially are the ones that are most interested in black women. You should check out the book. It's called Swirling, How to Date, Mate, and Relate, Mixing Race, Culture, and Creed. And if you like this conversation, we get really, really deep in the Pink Pill Underground. It is something that you do have to apply for, sign an NDA, because we really go deeper in these conversations that are not surface level. If you're interested, click the link in the description box so that you can apply and get on a call with me and we'll see if you're a fit. All right, guys, I would really like to know what you think about this. What do you think about the poll? Were you surprised at all? Were you surprised about what, how it all planned out, how it all panned out? I wasn't, but I'm wondering if you were. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm the Pink Pill. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, pinkies out.